8.2 health consultation. So there are many different things you are born with that you can't change, such as your age, your height, and your body shape or structure. But there are some things which can be changed to make the body healthier, such as your fitness, your weight, the amount of sleep you get per night, your stress levels, and your diet. I carried out a lifestyle questionnaire on my client to find a bit about him and what he gets up to and found out some background information about him. I then performed five different health screening tests on my client, which I'm going to be talking about in a minute. So a bit of background about my clients. He plays rugby, he regularly goes to the gym, he eats an alright diet, but we can talk about that later. He doesn't take any medication and has no medical conditions. So now I'm going to be talking about his results from all the different health screen tests that I performed on him and I'm going to be comparing his results to the average for his age and height and to normative data value tables. The first test was lung function. So my client performed the peak flow test three times and I've calculated his average score. So on the first time he did it he got 570, the second time 600 and the third time 625 meters per minute and his average was 598. So I have drawn an arrow on the table just here to show um, where in this data, normative data table, his results for peak flow would lie. So I mean the table has the youngest age of 20 and so it doesn't truly represent my client who's 18 but this was the youngest age I could find. So I've had to go with 20, so it doesn't really represent him because he's only 18. This could have an impact on the interpretation of my client's results. Um, based on the table, so I put his age as 20, and then on the table I have to put his eye height as 75 inches. Um, and so the value, the average of what someone who is 20 and 75 inches should be getting in their peak flow test is 693 um, but my client is getting 598 which is lower than what the norm is essentially but this is probably because the age is 20 and he's only 18 so he would actually so his lung function is still pretty good so my client is about 100 off this value so it is below average um, and a low result lower the result for lung function is worse as a lower result tends to indicate maybe potential things such as asthma however with a lung function of 600 nearly 600 there's no worries there um which is very unlikely um but so the main issue with this is that his age and height don't quite match up to the table um and so therefore i think that his result seems lower than what it should be but that's because of that reason um, and so here I've done a graph which show his first attempt his second attempt and his third attempt at the lung function peak flow and it's showing how he increases after each one so on his first attempt he was his lowest second attempt slightly better third attempt better um, therefore showing that maybe if he kept on doing it, it could potentially keep on getting better but after a while your lungs will get tired but I mean, he's doing well because he keeps on increasing it. So here is his average, nearly 600. And this from the data table of the normal, 693, is shown on the graph. So, I mean, he's not too far off it. I mean, he is lower, but then if maybe we could potentially get a graph, I mean, maybe if we could get one for an 18-year-old, then he probably would be reaching that as well. So the next one is for blood pressure. So blood pressure is med measured to find out if a person's blood pressure is too high or too low. Most people won't have any obvi obvious symptoms and so this test is very important. It's very easy to conduct and could save a life. So the blood pressure machine measures the pressure of the blood in the arteries. As blood moves it pushes against the sides of the blood vessels. The strength of your pushing is your blood pressure. If blood pressure is too high Extra strain is placed onto the arteries in the heart, and this can lead to heart attacks and, to, and some strokes. So my um, 
client had a blood pressure reading of 118 over 54. Um, the average blood pressure is 120 over 80. Um, and so he is relatively close to this, especially for his systolic value of 118, considering the normal is 120, so that is very close. And then his diastolic value is quite a bit under the average, but it's not so under that it's a concern. On this graph, I've plotted where his result came. And so along here, the diastolic value of 80 and then the systolic value of 118. I'm sorry, the diastolic value of 54 um, with a systolic value of 118. But some here where the arrow is pointing. And so he is in the ideal blood pressure range, which is really good. Um, and then over here, I've got a graph to show his results in comparison to the average. So the blue, so we've got the systolic and the diastolic value, and then the blue is showing his, and then the orange is showing the average. Um, obviously the average is just a rough average, so it's not like you have to, no one's gonna get exactly that, which some people will, but not exactly. Um, and so we've got the blue is, is him, and then the orange is his average. So obviously very, very close on the systolic value, and a bit under on the diastolic value. So on this graph, it is showing that he's in the ideal blood pressure range, but he's very close to being in the pre-high blood pressure. Um, so from his results, I would want to maybe reduce his maybe systolic value to get this down a little bit lower, because um, then he'd be further into the ideal blood pressure. Um, so maybe reducing that just down a little bit, so then he'd be further into the ideal blood pressure. Because at the moment on the graph it is showing that he's slightly high as he's nearly reaching the pre-high blood pressure which we don't particularly want um so it's a bit high at the moment uh, but it's pretty average is so it's not really anything to be concerned about but we would want to maybe reduce it slightly um it's better to have a blood pressure that is lower than is higher so a low blood pressure would be considered less than um 90 over 60 so systolic 90 and then diastolic 60. And a high blood pressure reading would be 140 over 90. So systolic 140 over diastolic, which is 90. So a high blood pressure is associated with things such as hypertension, which is when there's a lot of strain on the arteries and organs, which increases the risk of developing problems such as heart attacks and strokes. And then a lower blood pressure isn't as bad, but it's still a little bit of a problem. Um, and so a low blood pressure causes things such as dizziness and fainting in some. But my client is not too high or not too low, so has a very good blood pressure. It's kind of average, um, so which is really, really good. So the next one we did was heart rate. So my client's heart rate was 81 beats per minute. So heart rate is a measure of fitness. Um, it's how fast the heart beats per minute. It's a strong indicator of overall health and fitness, indicating general well-being as well as potential health risks. Um, so it kind of indicates that. Um, and it can inf inform you of your daily lifestyle choices. So um, this is a resting, average resting heart rate. So uh, the average adult resting heart rate is somewhere between 60 and 100 beats per minute, with optimal heart rate being between 60 and 80 beats per minute. So in the average of 60 to 100, he is bang on in the middle, so perfect. But then with a more optimal heart rate, which being between 60 and 80, he's, he is a bit higher. And the lower the heart rate, um, the better, as it indicates the health of the heart, leading to lower risk of heart attacks, higher energy levels, metabolic efficiency, and athletic endurance is shown. Um, so... My client with a heart rate, resting heart rate of 81 beats per minute is within the average, but due to it being a very large bracket of 60 to 100, most do fall in this category. So on the normative data table, the arrow points where he falls. So he is 18. So I mean, it's quite a big bracket for the age, 18 to 25. So he is on the lower end of that bracket because he's 18. Um, his heart rate, so his heart rate was 81. So on this table for men, it is considered to be below average. But again, his result may be affected by the fact that it's for 18 to 25 year olds. So because he's on the low end of the bracket, it could be affected by that. 
Um, however, that heart rate for below average isn't the greatest, so that would be something that I would consider working on with him. And as he said, one of his goals was to increase fitness as he didn't really like running or something like that. So maybe it's because his fitness is a bit low. So maybe we try to increase his fitness a bit, which would get down his heart rate. Um, so this is something I'd probably want to work on with him in the age to get it down and to get it down a little bit. And over here is a graph showing his heart rate results. So this is my clients and so here, 81. And then this is the average, so of around 70. So we would definitely want to reduce that down, um, reduce his heart, his heart rate basically. His heart rate isn't anything for concern, but it is just a little bit too high and it's better to get it down anyway because it shows greater fitness. Um, triacardia is a heart disorder which is associated with high resting heart rates. This is when the heart resting heart rate is above 100. Um, although my client is at risk of this at all, we need to avoid it getting any higher, especially if he wants to achieve his goal of improving fitness. A lower resting heart rate tends to indicate better fitness as the heart is delivering a great amount of oxygen to the body per heartbeat. As someone who has better fitness, their heart rate, as someone gets better fitness, their heart rate will decrease as the heart will be stronger. So if I improve my client's fitness as a result, their heart rate should decrease. So the next one is BMI, so body mass index. So um, it is a measure of the amount of body fat someone has and is related to understanding the long-term health risks. So it's a recommended method for diagnosing overweight and obesity. And it can also help a doctor determine overall fitness and risk of developing chronic diseases. So from my client's height and weight, I've been able to calculate his BMI. So his BMI came out as 24.2. So his BMI has left him in the healthy weight area. So on this normative data table, so he is, so the arrow points, so he's here, this is the healthy weight. So he is in this category. However, he's quite close to the overweight mark, which is between 25 and 30. So his result was 24.2. And then overweight is considered 25. So I see he's kind of nearly getting to the overweight area so he is quite close um so this shows where his result would lie so he's in the healthy category but he's very close to the overweight area it tends to be that a greater score indicates a greater level of fitness however the bmi doesn't in in take into account muscle as muscle weighs more than fat so often results can be skewed and people can be classed as overweight when actually they just have a lot of muscle and not, don't actually have that much fat on them. So this is a limitation of the method and is a possible explanation for why my client, although he's very sporty, is close to the overweight section due to him doing rugby and doing a lot of weightlifting at the gym. Um, he'll have a lot of muscle, which is leading to quite a high BMI. Um, so one of his goals was to lose weight. So I could work with him to lose a bit of um, weight, which would reduce his BMI meaning his score would be in a bit more in the healthy area. And then over here, I've done a graph for the results of his BMI. So this is my client's BMI in this dark blue shade of 24.2. And then in the underweight category, it's here. And you've got the healthy weight, which he is, and then overweight and obese. So this kind of shows it increasing. Um, and so he is in the healthy weight. So that is what we want. So that is really good. Um, so the next one is hip to waist ratio. So your hip to waist ratio is a measure of fat distribution, which may help indicate a person's overall health. It can be used to see if someone's overweight and if that ex excess weight is putting their health at risk. It can also help predict your risk from heart attacks and diabetes. My client's hip waist to waist ratio was 0 0.8. So to work this out, I took his waist of 80 and um, divided this from by his hip, which was 90. So on this table, I have added an arrow to show where his score would fit. Again, the table has a lowest average of 20, lowest age, sorry, of 20, but he's only 18. So his hip to waist um, score is shown by the arrow on the table. It says that a score of less than 0 0.83 is low and a healthy hip to waist is 0 0.8, 0 0.9 or less in men and 0 0.8 or less in women. So his score is low and below average. However, this could be due to the fact that the age is um, 20 to 29, and he's obviously under that age. So a lower hip to waist ratio is better, as it shows a person has less, less fat. Men and women with a hip to waist ratio of over one 
or higher has an increased risk of heart disease and other conditions linked to being overweight. My client's score is good here as it means and it shows that he has a lower risk of having or developing chronic diseases such as coronary heart disease, hypertension and diabetes, which is associated with high hip to waist ratio. His is a very quite a low hip to waist ratio, which is good. So on here, I've got a graph to show the hip to waist ratio. So this is the average for his age and his height, and this is his. So his is lower, but that isn't a bad thing. That's a good thing. So that is excellent. So now I'm going to be talking about the strengths and weaknesses or areas of improvement um, I've identified from the health questionnaire I completed on my client. So the first strength, which I picked out from the answers in section one for his goals, is his commitment. So when I asked about him about how committed he is to achieving his goals um, out of 10, so one not being very committed, 10 being very committed, he said a, he said a seven, um, which is showing that he's pretty committed to it. So this is a strength as it shows that he's motivated and will hopefully put in the time and effort to achieve his goals and hopefully won't go off course too easily and will be determined and motivated. So I've identified some strengths from the answers in section two, which is from physical activity. The first strength being that he exercises five or more times a week. This is really good as it's recommended for those who are 18, like my client, should be doing at least 60 minutes of physical activity per day, which my client is meeting as he's doing five or more, which is really good for his age, um, as many people are not doing that at all. So that's excellent. Um, and another strength which I picked out was that his first physical activity he said that his fitness was really good. He said on a scale of one to 10, um, he was an eight with 10 being really fit, one being not so fit. So he said it was an eight. However, he did mention the fact that although he is, he does classify himself as being fit, he wants to improve his fitness in things, different areas, so such as running. So he said he kind of his other fitness, so some areas of his fitness is really good, whereas others such as his running fitness and kind of long distance cardiovascular fitness isn't so good so that would be something I could work on with him but it's good that he thinks of himself as being fit and it's good that he's you know his strength is he'll be able to cope with the demands of and I'll be able to challenge him more and won't need to spend time on him with him improving his fitness because he will already have pretty good fitness so he'll be able to keep up with the exercise that I want him to do and I'll be able to challenge him and adapt his training so he'll be able to do everything that I have need him to do um, another strength is that he varies the type of exercises he does each week. So he goes to the gym, he does rugby, um, and does this regularly each week. This is good as the variation between different exercises means that he won't get bored. He'll be working and exercising different muscle groups and mean that his overall fitness strength and speed will improve. So it's good that he's varying in what he's doing, not just doing rugby, not just doing the gym. Um, as he'll be working different areas of the body and he'll be able to, you know, his work in the gym will be helping him in, in rugby and his rugby will be helping him in the gym, so they're kind of helping each other. And so then for the next section, which is nutrition, the first thing that I picked out is that he eats um, his he eats between three and four of his five a day. Uh, this is good because he's eating fruit and veg, but it is recommended that he is should be eating at least five portions of fruit and veg per day. So although this isn't, you know, three to four is good, five is the recommended, so he should really be eating more. But this is a strength as it's, you know, better than nothing. Um, and it is good because he is eating fruit and veg, which is important, so he's getting that nutrients into his body. And then another strength is that he doesn't drink any fizzy drinks. Um, fizzy drinks are really bad for your body. They're very unhealthy and contain a lot of sugar. So it's great that he doesn't really drink them, and it's definitely a strength of his. The next section of, section of lifestyle, so there's many strengths here. So the first being that he has relatively low stress levels. So on a scale of one to 10, I asked him how stressed you think you are. And he's basically said that he was a four, 10 being high, one being low stress, so he was a four. This is good as being stressed can affect a person emotionally, physically, and mentally. When speaking to my client, he said that he adopted many ways to reduce and uh, tackle his stress that really work for him and really help. Um, which is really good and he said the main stresses in his life are college but he says he copes with that really well um, and then the next strength is the amount of sleep he gets per night now 
this he said he gets around seven to eight if he's lucky i mean this isn't awful but it's definitely something that i would look to improve i've done this as a strength as you know it's over six hours it's not less than six hours um so it is a strength however seven to eight isn't really enough but i've put it as a strength anyway because it is still something that he should think is still good and you just don't want him to think that he's sleeping isn't good um so having enough sleep is very important um, if my client wasn't nowhere near getting enough sleep and maybe was only getting five hours of sleep or something, then he would lack lots of energy and he wouldn't really be able to complete my training program as effectively as he'd really struggle. So um, with sleep, for his age, it is recommended that he has around nine to ten hours per night. So and at the moment he is under, but it's still better than nothing. And then the next strength is that he doesn't smoke. This is really good as smoking has a massive effect on a person's ability to exercise and it decreases a person's lung capacity and means they come out of breath much more quickly and it's recommended that you don't smoke and so he doesn't so that's great and then the final section for physical health um his medical history was all clear and this is a great strength as it means that you know it's all clear and it won't be affecting his ability to achieve his goals and so that's really good so now I've picked out some areas of for improvement, also known as weaknesses, within my client's lifestyle. So the first section of his goals, just quickly, is that his goals he wanted to achieve were very vague. So his goals were to lose weight, to get stronger and to get quicker. So these goals are too broad and too vague. So such as like get quicker in what sport, lose how much weight. So, you know, these are very vague goals. And so often lead with very vague goals. It often leads to less motivation as people can't really see improvements because they're goals are very vague and so if they can't really see the improvements they're more likely to give up and not be as motivated and by setting smart goals which can be achieved it's much more likely to them being completed um so it's better if we have slightly more in-depth or more simple goals um the next weakness or area to improvement was in the physical activity section and one of the limitations was he only does intense exercise and he doesn't do any moderate or low exercise. So this is a limitation um, as, you know, intense exercise is really good and it's very important to do intense exercise. Um, however, it is also important to vary the exercises and also do moderate and low exercise. Um, so it is very important to vary the exercise intensities so the body is used to it all. And so it can be, so the body can be effective at all different difficulties and intensities. The NHS recommends 60 minutes of mix or moderate intense physical activity every day. So a mix of moderate and intense. So it's not good just doing intense. It's also good to give the body a slight break and do a bit of moderate as well. Um, so for nutrition, an area for improvement is that he doesn't drink enough water per day. Um, he says he drinks one to two litres, usually one litre, which although isn't awful, it's not really enough. It, I definitely want to improve this um, and make sure that he's consuming more fluid and taking on more fluids. Um, especially when you're doing, he's, he regularly, regularly exercises. And so that is when your body needs to continually take on more fluids. And so it's very important that he's drinking enough and doesn't get dehydrated. So for the amount of exercise he's doing, one to two litres just isn't really enough. So it's recommended that we drink at least two litres um, so my client may on some days be reaching this, however, with a lot of exercise, he, he needs to be taking on more and it's vital that we keep our body hydrated. And when the body isn't hydrated, many symptoms can occur, such as dizziness, muscle cramps, and this can result in the body not being able to perform at its highest level. And then another, another nutritional weakness of the client is that he eats out and gets takeaways three to four times a week Ooh, on the PowerPoint it says one to two, but it'll be three to four. That's slightly wrong. So he says three to four times a week. This could definitely be improved as takeaways can be very unhealthy and having you know, four a week can add up to as many as 16 a month, which is just too many, um, especially if his, one of his goals is to lose weight and um, by eating that many takeaways isn't really going to help at all. So, and it's, you know, eating a lot of takeaways isn't good for your health and just we'd want to definitely seek to improve this area. And then, Another slight weakness is that my client, although you know does have many strengths, a slight weakness was that when he goes out to a party, he drinks to three to four units of alcohol. Now it's not awful because um, 
it is recommended that men don't drink more than three to four units a day. So it's not like he's going over that limit. However, he is still quite young. Um, and three to four units in one night is quite a lot. I mean, he only does this when he has a party, which is good. So he's not doing this regularly. Um, but I would think about maybe reducing that down slightly. So my client is drinking quite a large amount if the recommended to not go over is three to four units a day. Um, and so he is reaching the highest level. Um, and in the short term effect, it kind of alcohol just affects communication, this amount of alcohol, three to four units, affects communication, reaction time, and ability to make decisions. So it can be slightly dangerous. And also drinking alcohol can increase and lead to weight gain. And so if we're trying to achieve one of these goals to lose weight, alcohol consumption should really be reduced. And then a barrier or weakness is that um, physical health is that he gets um, quite a lot of injuries from rugby. Um, and this is definitely a barrier for him reaching his goals as he might not be able to do the exercise I necessarily want him to do if we feel his injury. So he was explaining how he obtains many injuries from rugby, such as ongoing sole shoulder injury, which he currently has. This is a weakness as it could be slightly inhibiting his effect on his ability to carry out certain exercises or make him vulnerable to developing more injuries. So now I'm going to be talking about some recommendations or ways to Im improve um, or some strategies for improvement. Um, and so I'm going to break some of them down. So I've got three main recommendations that I'm going to be talking about, um, but I've also got a few that I'm going to be really briefly talking about. So um, recommendations at which I've got is for the fact that he does um, little or moderate or low intensity. So I'm just going to be talking about a few really briefly and then the three highlighted in red are the ones that I'm going to go into a lot more detail in. But just quickly for physical activity, I was saying how um, a little recommendation to do is that to improve the fact that he doesn't do, he only does intense exercise to get them to do some little or moderate intense exercise. One simple way I'm going to do or recommend him is just to start to walk more. He says that he gets dropped to college each morning by a parent in the car. So I was saying to start off, I could get, I could suggest his parent drop his drop him off further away from college so he has to walk, maybe starting off with five minutes, so five minutes walk, um, and then maybe each week increasing it by five minutes. So each week, so maybe the first week he has to walk five minutes to college, and then the second week his parent drops him off maybe 10 minutes away from college and he has to walk there, and then maybe 15 minutes, um, just so that he gets a bit of um, walking, a bit of low intensity exercise. So this will improve his fitness as well. Um, so we'll gradually increase the amount he has to walk, maybe you know, keep on increasing the distance and the minutes. And if he's doing well, you can start walking home from college as well, or be picked up after 10 minutes after doing this. So this will give him some low intensity exercise, but it's a good way to help him lose weight and improve that fitness. And these are the two goals that you want to achieve. And then the next um, limitation is that his physical health. So a recommendation to improve this was the fact that because he gets injured a lot, some recommendations to try to prevent or reduce the likelihood of him getting an injury. Um, some, recommendation, some recommendations I have would be just to make sure he warms up properly before and after rugby training and his gym sessions and so he always warms up and that he cools down after them all. This is very simple but an important way to help prevent injuries. And then also if he feels pain he should stop and rest it um, and this will prevent further damage. He should also all always complete all of the exercises his physio gives him and not skip skip them as he says that sometimes he skips his exercises that the physio gives him because he doesn't feel like he has time but he says that he does really have time he just sometimes can't really be bothered so it's very important that he does the exercises so that he his injury reduces and so that his um, arm becomes stronger and stuff so now I'm going to be talking in depth about some recommendations and strategies I have to help my clients in some areas of weakness that I've picked out. So I'm going to be um, to help to improve these different things by three different strategies. So I'm going to be talking about his sleep, so improving his sleep, his water intake, and basically his consumption of takeaways. So I'm going to try and reduce the consumption of takeaways and at the same time get him to eat his five a day.